Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today's deck tech is something that I haven't done for a while. Well, a colour pairing I haven't done for a while. Deck techs, you'll see, you've all been watching, and thank you for that. I've been really happy with the view cam going up recently. This deck tech is all around um, blue green, so we're going back down that route. It's been a colour pairing I've done the past in the past before. I still think blue green is probably one of the more powerful colour pairings in Commander. But this one is a little bit different because most of the cards cost three mana or less. So, without further ado, here's my take on Ivy, Gleeful Spell Thief. Um, it's blue and green for a 2-1 flying legendary fairy rogue. But it has a very strange ability that I can't endlessly remember seeing anywhere else ever before. And the ability is, when a player casts a spell that targets only a single spell creature, single creature other than Ivy, Gleeful Spell Thief, you may copy that spell. The copy targets Ivy. A copy of her aura spell becomes a token. This is really strange wording. It's not something you see in Magic that often, but it did excite me and it's taken me a little bit longer to build this deck than I thought it was going to, mainly because I was trying to find a way to do it. I did have a look at EDH Rec and some of the other Commander websites and people are playing a little bit similar I've really gone hard down the path. Um, so this is what we're going to come up with today. So let's start with the mana base. Because Ivy only costs two, and most of our spells, which I'll just quickly scroll down and show you, are in the two, one and two bracket, I've managed to trim the lands a little bit. We've only gone with 34 lands. Um, we've got a lot of the usual things you'd expect, you know, Breeding Pool, Command Tower. I've gone with Fable Passage and Field of Rune and Field of the Dead and Flooded Grove. But we've kept it, you know, mainly blue-green, some blue-green dual lands. It didn't seem a lot of point in doing anything else. And because the actual numbers, the casting costs of the creatures we're going to be getting out, the things we're going to be playing is so low, I thought we'll try and trim it a little bit for 34. Now, I'm not saying this is something you should do normally. Most of the commander decks you'll see me play and talk about on this channel have got between 37, 38 lands in them, because that's where I tend to be. But this one I decided because everything is so cheap, we don't need that much land to make it work. So I figured it was worth having a go, trying to do it a little bit lower than what we'd normally do. One thing I will point out though with this deck, I've included two lands um, that I have included before. First one's Red Equi Tower. We could end up drawing some quite a lot of cards with this deck and we won't, don't want to be discarding them because we're trying to really get in there quite hard with Ivy. The other one that I've put in is because Ivy is so small, and until we can get some things on her, um, you really need to go through making your creatures unblockable. Now, four matters a lot for Rogue's Passage. We've got some other things that do it as well, but this does give you a backup plan, so you can just punch through and maybe hit your opponent for 21 points of damage, commander damage in one turn on Magic Online, and that's them gone. So that's what we're aiming to do, really, is the mo most of the time. Um, but the rest of the deck is, like I say, Blue green dual lands all the way through, um, including I've chucked in Yavimar Cradle of Growth as well. Just those the things like the Reliquy Tower, Miloko that's in here, um, Rogue's Passage as well, if we need to. We can still tap it for some coloured mana. Likewise, you know, Field of the Dead, Field of Rune, they're in there as well to do that actual little trick for us. Artifact mana wise, We've gone with Mox Tantalite, because um, it does produce both colours when we get it eventually into play. Hopefully we can suspend it on turn one, have it in play on turn four and start doing some interesting stuff. Um, I've got Sol Ring in here, just so we've got that little bit of acceleration. Along with Arcane Signet, I kind of figured we didn't need that much um, artifact ramp in this deck to make this deck tick because of some of the other cards I'll include. So we've only gone with them, it's a minimal amount. So we'll see if it works when we get some games in with it on the stream later on in the week. But this is where it gets interesting. I really went down the aura route with this deck. Now there are people I've seen playing it with things like um, Giant Growth, Instance that pump things, Instance in Blue that do things. We've got a few, we've not got many, but I decided to try and really go down the aura route, to try and try and really take advantage of the fact that if we can put an aura on another creature with Ivy in play, we get a copy of that aura on Ivy as well. Now it's a little bit dangerous, I know, because there are things like pacifism out there um, and that could result in us not being able to use Ivy at all or we'll try and get Ivy killed. But I'm sure we can find a way around it if we need to and I'm hoping this really does work out. So let's go through some of the cards in the deck right now. Right, so 
first enchantment or aura we're going to call them auras they're not all enchantments um aqueous form we put it on ivy can't be blocked okay what we're trying to do is put it on other creatures as we go along so i'll come to the other creatures but the auras at the top of the list Curiosity's in we like the idea of drawing extra cards this is one of the reasons we've got reliquary tower in the deck likewise curious obsessions here as well Hopefully we will be attacking with creatures when we put this in play, otherwise we are sacrificing it. Um, but it's just another version of Curiosity which I thought was quite good. Here come the low drop creatures. So we've got Fairy Miscreant. Um, it's just in the deck because it's a 1-1 one, one for 1 that flies. It's another way of evading things. Same with Mausoleum Wanderer. It does get a plus 1, plus 1 when another spirit enters the battlefield under your control. And you can sack it at a push to counter his instant or sorcery that might be blowing you up. You know. Wrath of God, Damnation, something Crux of Fate's popular at the moment with all the dragon decks running around. So it does give you a little bit of protection if, and I mean if, if you've managed to pump its power up. Most people will have one mana laying around. It's not going to do a lot unless it's the early game. In the later game, if this is big, it's going to stop basically any sorceries that are going to destroy you by sacking it off. So bear that in mind. Birds of Paradise is coming, so we can have that little bit of flyer as well. and also helps with the mana. The first one of the instants that's come in is Blossom Defense. I wanted some way of giving some of the creatures hexproof when I've got them in play. So you know, if we get Ivy in on turn three, we could hopefully have this in our hand ready to protect it from anything that may happen to it that turn. But yeah, you know, it's only a one shot, only works against once. It's not the greatest plan in the world, but it's a starting point. Got a series of elves. We've got Elvish Mystic, Fionoid Elves. Somewhere down here, I've got Lamar Elves. I'll jump ahead a little bit. They're in here. They're creatures. We can put the auras on them with Ivy in play. We'll get a copy of the aura on Ivy. It's that's the real main plan. Get some cheap creatures in play. Start putting the auras on them and getting the copies onto Ivy. Okay. So going back to some of the other things. I've put Generous Visitor in um, from Neon Dynasty because we are casting a lot of enchantments so this will probably get big as we go along. Glade Cover Scouts in because it's got Hexproof naturally. Putting an aura on this with Ivy in play means you are going to get that aura in play. Okay, even if Ivy gets killed you're still going to have it attached to the Glade Cover Scout and it's not the worst plan in the world. I've chucked in um, Jahidi Offshoot. It's a one drop, it's a zero three, it's a defender. But one of the things I figured with this deck is you're not playing that many land, but you do need some way to gain a little bit of life just to keep you going. This was a nice cheap way of doing it. At the end of the day, if you've got to drop the auras on this to get the copies on Ivy, it's not the worst plan. Keen Sense is the green version of Curiosity, so we'll get on with that. And what else I mentioned? Um, Naheem Renegade, Yes, if we've got something that's gone to the graveyard, we can get it in as a 2-2. But it's got Death Touch. It's a nice little early blocker, which will hopefully slow, slow some of the rush stuff down that we may be facing. Rancor is the most traditional green enchantment I can think of. Plus 2, plus nothing, gives the creature Trample. And when it goes to the graveyard, you get to put it back in your hands. So it's your recurring enchantment that could really help you win the games. Stick Sense is in as well. Another way of getting damage to a player and you draw a card. It's nice if you can get it on a creature and get it copied, you know, especially if you've got it on a creature with aqueous form. You're going to be drawing those cards, which is really nice. It doesn't pump the toughness or power, but it still does the job we might need it to do. Tamiyo Safekeeping is another one I've put in, so we get, you know, if we've got an opponent who's casting Day of Judgment, we can't stop it. Um, we can give our creature indestructible and hexproof until the end of the turn. This will probably go straight on Ivy if Ivy's in play and we get there. It's a nice little trick from um, Neon Dynasty, so I figured it's worth playing. I've also chucked in Alexia of Immortality just so we can shuffle anything that does get put in our graveyard back into our library again. It seemed like a reasonable plan to me when I was building the deck. Moving on from there, we go to the two drops, and you can see there's 27 two drops, and the first one's Ether Tunnel. <laughs> Slightly better version of Aqueous Form. Okay, you don't get to scribe, but it does give you a little bump on the power, and it also says this creature can't be blocked. One blue, one, it seems like a fair gamble to do it with. Same with Cartusha Knowledge. Um, it comes into play, gives the creature plus one, plus one, and gives them flying. It's very nice if you can drop it on one of your elves, but the actual card draw is nice. You know, it, if you get a copy of it onto Ivy, you're going to pump Ivy up automatically. Cloud of Fairies you got two mana in play, you've got a couple of one mana enchantments, you can play this, untap the two lands you used it to cast you used to cast Cloud of Fairies, put the enchantments on if you've got them. Seems like a sensible plan. It's also another cheap flyer, which is why it's here. Likewise, Edwall Illuminators here. 
We don't do that much investigating in this deck, but it's a nice cheap 1-3 flyer. Investigation may turn up occasionally, but most of the time you're playing it because you want the 1-3 of three flyer, so you've got a fair way of dealing with any sort of 4 damage, 5 damage removal spells. Okay, nothing's going to survive things like Terminate or Terra, but this does give you a chance to get through any red damage spells that may be heading your way on your creatures. Same with Fairy Duelist, it's quite nice because it can flash in at the end of your opponent's turn, so before your turn in the game you can flash it in. You can give one of their creatures minus two, minus nothing because the end of turn trigger is still gone and you should still be able to hit them with that minus two, minus nothing, so it may help. Omen Speaker is here for the scry ability. Yes, a push, we could put some enchantments on it. It's not something I want to be targeting. I'll come down to more of some of the ones I'm targeting in a minute. But this one is just the scry, so you can sort the top of your deck out and it seemed reasonable in this slot. Rune of Flight's in, give it to the creature, put it on the creature, draw the card. We've seen runes a lot recently, not so much the blue one, it wasn't really that popular in the rune deck that was running right and standard a while back. But this one is here now, and it gets to give our creature flying, and as long as it comes into play, we get to draw. Likewise, if you put it in on another creature, you've got Ivy in play, you get two draws, obviously you get the copy draw as well. So bear that in mind when we're talking about the runes. There is the other one in here coming up shortly. Security Bypass is nice. It's the new one um, from New Capenna, if I remember correctly. I think it is New Capenna. Yeah, it is. Um, you just attack one creature. It can't be blocked. And when it deals damage to a player, it gets connived. So you're making the creature bigger. Yeah, you are going to be chucking things in the graveyard, but hopefully you have your Lexor of Immortality standing by ready to shuffle it all back in. I chucked in Snapcaster Mage. I haven't played Snapcaster Mage that much. I only picked it up recently for my collection on MTGO. But I figured with some of the incidents we've got coming in, um, like Tamiyo Safekeeping, like Blossom and Defense, having this available with the flash and giving the, that creature, that card flashback to protect some of the other stuff, seemed like a reasonable plan. And at the end of the day, if you've got a cast that's a 2 1 for 2 mana, eh, so be it. Galio's Greeters is in. I put this in because we are going to be casting creatures. And it would be nice to just pump this up a little bit and putting the plus one plus one counts on Gala Greeters has been really good in some of my other decks. Is this going to work in this one? I'm not convinced yet, but we're going to try it out and see. Heroic Intervention is another one of these cards. You know, in past videos I've talked about the fact that if I'm playing red, you're going to see Dockside Extortionist now. Well, I'm going to be really honest. If you're going to see green now, you're probably going to see Heroic Intervention at some stage. The ability to give all your creatures hexproof and indestructible to the end of turn is massive at the moment. There are lots of people, when I play on MTGO, running around must removal effects. Um, like Damnation, Wrath of God, so on and so forth, or they've got bolts and things to kill your creatures with. Having this there to protect all your creatures for one turn is really good. Likewise, it's also really good to get through if you need to punch through and get those last few damage points in, because you hopefully your creatures will be big enough by the time you cast this that they'll be killing anything that's blocked. So that's why it's here. Um, Inscription Abundance is here, so we can do the two mana and put some plus one plus one counters around but we've also got the ability if we get up to five mana we can kick it and we can choose any number of them which nine times out of ten will be all of them so you'll be putting two plus one plus one counters on something gaining the life that you put the plus one plus one counters on then using that creature to fight something else that's in play that's annoying you it seems like a reasonable chance and it's an instant so it can be a little bit of a combat trick that may surprise your opponents because of all the auras cameo transcendence is in here as well we might as well have it in and if we get an enchantment that goes to the graveyard this is there it comes back to our hands so it gives us a little bit of recursion for creatures it's also a fairly good target for enchantments as anyone will know who played like i said earlier the room deck a while in standard lotus cobra i put in purely because to go alongside the elves it's a way of ramping our mana we've got mana coming in hopefully every turn and then this doubles up on that land so if you're playing something like a basic forest you still get the extra mana from it if you're playing one of the tap lands i've got in the deck you still get a mana that turn when you play it that's why it's here for no other reason paradise druid i've included because of the hex proof it's a nice little target to put the enchantments on when you've got ivy in play it's very hard for your opponent to remove yes it's only hex proof as long as it's untapped but you can just use that as a blocker 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 and just build it up so the stuff goes on ivy if thought it was a good plan we're going to try and see runamites plus one plus one and trample you all know what the situation with this one this has been going around standard a lot two mana to get this ability seems like a plan now card draw in green is hard to come by this is one of the few cards we've got that will actually draw as a card when it comes in in green so 
Hey, let's go for it. Um, secure a tribe elder is here for mana ramp. No other reason for it. We are going to play it. We're going to sack it. We're going to find a basic land. No other reason for it at all, unless you're absolutely desperate for a blocker. Just remember, if you do do it, don't do what I do and go on auto yield, yield until your opponent's um, damage steps so you can sack this off before the damage resolves and get the land if you've blocked something that hasn't got trample. Sanctum Weaver's in to ramp our mana up. We're going to be playing a lot of enchantments. There's a lot of auras coming in. Let's have the man Sanctum Weaver in as well so we can get the extra mana from that, which may help later on down the game. Selena Ledgewalker, Hexproof, can only be blocked by creatures that fly, so it's got semi unblockable already, and the Hexproof really helps. There are flying creatures around, so you do have to keep your eye on for them, but make sure you've got enough to do this with. Likewise, um, Sylvan Caritids here, again, it's a defender, so you're not going to be attacking with it, but it has got Hexproof, so it's a good target for some of the auras that are coming in, especially when Ivy's in play. And you're trying to remember, with this deck, I'm trying to build Ivy up to 21 damage so I can just go in, go in, go in, and kill my opponents over three turns. I put the Archer in, um, it's got Hexproof, it's got Reach, two greens are a little bit tough sometimes in this deck, it's not too bad but it can be tough, but the Hexproof and Reach and a 2-1, I figured it was worth a try and getting it on. Coiling Oracles in, just as a creature, I decided to go down this route, you know, we've got the lands, it does look, look at our top card and we put it in, if it's a land we get an extra land drop, otherwise it goes on a hand, so it does go through the deck a little bit. Ice Feather Avens here, just so we can play it as a morph and then flip it up and bounce something that's annoying us. So, but it's a 2-2 that flies for 2 mana. It's a reasonable creature once we start getting some auras on it as well. Curious Followers, just to untap permanence. We have got some things we are looking to be, we are going to be looking to untap at some stage. This might be a way of doing it, so that's why that's here. And because we're in blue-green, I decided that Lola's Cryptozoologist might come in. This is one of the things we have got that does make clues. We are having a lot of little creatures come into play, so having Lolas in play and then backing them up with little creatures and getting those clues to help us draw through the deck seems like a reasonably good plan to me. Going up to the three drops, normal disclaimer, Time Twister's in this deck. I like Time Twister. I'm playing blue-green. I wanted this in here. Obviously, if you're trying to build this in real paper version cards, you're not unless you're very rich, um, you're not going to have Time Twister. Take it out, put another creature in, put another cheap Planeswalker in, put something else in. If you've got it on MTGO, play it on MTGO. If you haven't, don't worry about it, just go for it. Jace Mirror Mage is in, so we can do the whole scry thing. Hopefully we'll get to a point where we can kick it, but basically we're just going to be using Jace to do the plus one to scry and then the next turn the zero ability where we're hopefully going to be hitting one of our enchantments so you know cap one point on one point off that's what we're trying to do careful cultivation um i put this in i'm not 100 percent sure about this the one plus one plus three and giving the creature reach seemed really good to me and the ability to tap for two and the channel ability isn't the worst thing in the world either, so we can get the little human monk if we need it. It does give us a way of getting another creature if we're running out of creatures or we need a blocker. So, hey hum, that's why it's here. I went with fight rigging as well, um, purely because I think getting some plus one, plus one counters kicking around will help. And yeah, we might get a creature up to seven quite easily. I haven't played this deck yet. This is all me hypothetical at the moment, so we'll be playing it at some stage. But at the moment, getting the power of creature with power of seven doesn't seem that difficult with this deck, so we should be flipping and whatever's under fight rig and we can get to play for free. So it seemed like a plan for me. Here's growing rights. We do need to find the creatures. This helps us find those creatures. And if we can get it to flip, having that extra mana instead of playing Gaia's Cradle seemed like a really solid plan for me. Search for Tomorrow is another ramp card. We're hopefully going to suspend it. If we can't suspend it, we'll play it when we hit three mana, just to get you know thin our deck down a little bit and get it out of the way. Witch Stalker, I decided, is a nice big 3-3 three, three hexproof creature. Um, there's a lot of blue and black kicking around at the moment. If you think of Miriam, if you think of the new version of Braze, I've played a lot against them recently, and they're playing blue and black spells all the time. So you're going to build this up quite quickly when it's in play. 
Hedana's climb, I'll just make that a little bit bigger, sorry, not Garrick, we all know what Garrick does, I hope we'll get to that. Hedana's climbs in here, it's one of the reasons we're playing Kiora's Follower, so we can untap this and do it again and keep bumping our creature up a couple of times, hopefully. With the plus one, plus one counters as well, it does make the creatures bigger. We are, you know, a lot of the creatures are small, so the, having this around and untapping it, maybe getting two uses out of it in a turn to get in that damage seems like a reasonably good plan. You probably saw Oko flap up a minute ago. It's blue green. If you've got blue green deck, you're going to be playing Oko and Commander now. I cannot think, and I still cannot think of a good reason not to play Oko. Just even the plus two, get the food token to give game three life at some stage in the future is good. Or even turning one of your small annoying creatures, one of the, your small creatures, you know, like Birds of Paradise, for example, you might be at a point where your mana flooded, you don't need the bird. You can just turn it into an elk. It seems like a reasonable plan to me. And then exchange your control of an artifact or a creature. You control a target creature and a target creature an opponent controls with power of three or less. Again, helps you out. There's a lot of power of three or less creatures kicking around. So I decided to go with Oko. Quandrix Command. I played this in standard, believe it or not. I like, I like this in my blue-green decks. It's just one of those cards. Two mana, th or three mana, return target creature or players walk to its owner's hand, put some plus one, plus one counters around, that's what you're mainly going to be doing with it. There may be a point in the game where you can't find, you know, your Elixir of Immortality, maybe it gets milled away, maybe you have to discard it. This gives you an option to get it back in your graveyard, so you can shuffle, um, back in your library, sorry, so you can shuffle your graveyard back into your library later on. But it is probably going to be the first the first ability and the third, third ability, returning the creature or planes walk and put, chucking some plus one, plus one counters around. It's also quite a nice little combat trick. If they're attacking you for lethal, you can bank their biggest threat and still have a reasonable threat in play. So keep that thought going. That's really the bulk of the deck is down here. If you look at the little numbers above each of the columns, you know, 20... One drops, 27 two drops, 10 three drops. That's the bulk. We've got a few more. Just to finish it off, I thought Path of Discovery is quite nice. Get to four mana playing creatures. It might help you with your um, mana ramp. So that's why that's in here. The most expensive war I can have on this deck at the moment is Pattern of Rebirth. And you can see why in a second, because you can see the card that's coming up in the six drop slot. Um, that's why Pattern of Rebirth is in here. There's no other reason of having it here. It, but it can help. It might give you a way out of some of these tricky situations. Garrick Wild Speaker's in. It can create beasts, it can untap lands. If we've managed to flip our growing rights to Imlatech, we can untap that, get some more mana as well. Seems like a reasonably good plan to me. The reason Pattern of Rebirth is this. Um, Sagu Mauler. It's 6-6, six, six, Trample, Hexproof. Yeah, you can play it as more if you don't want to play it. You want to play it face up as much as you can, basically. Having that 6-6 six, six come into play and giving that as your target for all your little bits of enchantment stuff you've got going on just seems like a really good plan to me. Hence why it's in this deck. I'm having a bit of fun here. Um, classification got a really bad rep in Ikoria. Yes, when it came to the battlefield, you tap Enchanted Creature. That's fine. I can cope with not having a creature in play, but having that creature untap as a minimum in this deck of a 2021 if you put it on the birds of paradise just seems like such a good plan to me and such a laugh hence why it's here luxurious librations in that's one of the other few instances we've got given a creature plus x plus x until the end of the turn and creating a one one green and white citizen token let's go for it notice if you do it it targets so i think you do get two creatures if you cast it on an elf say for three and you've got ivy in play i think you do end up with two sisters and tokens until i try the deck out i'm not sure but i believe that's how it works so i've got the rules right the final card just so we had another planeswalker is just to have nissa in here again it's for the scry ability very similar to jason mirror mage just so we can scry the top of our library and make sure it's set up so we are getting the things we need to make ivy go off and that's it that's my little short deck tech for today on ivy gleeful spell thief um Thank you for watching the video to here. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if I've missed anything major in the comments down below. Likewise, I'm still trying to build up to 150 followers on YouTube, on Twitch. Um, we're a few days off yet. We're, what, 20, 23 days off my target of hitting 150. At the moment, we had a few people join us last week, so we're up to 109, so 41 more. If you haven't followed me on Twitch, I'd really love you just go and hit the link down below and just give me a follow. Likewise, you know, if you've got a spare Amazon Prime subscription you're not using, you want to give it to me for a month, 
I'd be very happy for that as well. I am starting to do nights where I just have um, followers and subscribers playing with me while we're streaming. So bear that in mind, it does give you way into that. You don't have to subscribe, the follow is important to me at the moment. And likewise, if you haven't done it before, subscribe to me here on YouTube. Hit the button, you'll see all my deck takes coming up. You can go back through some of the other things. I've uploaded a couple of games. On Saturday the 10th I uploaded the stream from Thursday night where I played the decks that I've done that I've done deck techs about during the previous week. So go and have a look at them and hopefully that's good. But that's my introduction to Ivy. That's what I'm gonna be playing when I see Ivy. And hopefully I'll catch you on my stream as soon as possible. Take care, thanks for watching.